Maureen is a professor of arts and uh, communication as well as the director of Young Bodies and is the director of the Young Bodies Institute in, in New Jersey. And um, you should know that Young Bodies in New Jersey is the largest young audiences organization in the nation of all the states. New Jersey's got the most going on in that regard. It's, um, uh, Professor Heffernan also runs the Emerging Artist Creativity Hub, a Saturday program at the College of New Jersey, designed for teen artists. Recently, she led a workshop focused on acting, creative writing, and film, creating a post production as part of the uh, Aruba International Film Festival. As a scenic designer, Ray is designed on Broadway, off Broadway, for regional theaters, international theaters, TV commercials, feature films, television, and Saturday Night Live spoof commercials. He is also the recipient of the 2006-2007 Avi Award for Best Scenic Design. Currently, he is a professor of theater arts and a coordinator of the Design Tech Theater Program at Marymount Manhattan College in New York City. Please welcome our speakers and put on your active listening ears. Next. Um, this is a play called Opus. Um, this play is still around. This is a relatively new play. We just did this two years ago. And it's a play about um, a string uh, quartet that's been playing together for a number of years. And one of the guys is having a nervous breakdown and had to leave the group. And they're going to bring in a new person that ends up being a, a young woman who's just out of school. And uh, so it's all about relationships. And, and, um, and it is about this violin and cello that they have been given this quartet. It's very, very, uh, uh, you know, like Stradivarius kind of wonderful instruments. And who owns the instruments? Who owns the rights to the music? All that kind of struggle. And, you know, what does it mean to have to play in collaboration? What does it mean when those collaborations are shattered? But so we were talking about um, this idea that. There's so much that happens around this instrument, and the one artist that's going to leave wants to take it with him, and they don't want it to go. And so um, Ray and I, knowing we were in this gigantic theater, four people, not realistic. I mean, it's very realistic acting, but not. We we're going to build the house for each one because it goes to multiple places. There are many, many locations. There's 17 locations in this play, and so the idea is that we wanted something that would um, give you perhaps an illusion or a suggestion of place without being the reality. Also, um, that Maureen and I talked about it, that what ties these people together is passion. They have a real passion for the music and passion for a particular piece of music. Yeah. Um, and so, for me, it wasn't about a place, but it was about this passion for music. Um, so, we came up with the idea that the entire stage would be one large violin. It would pivot in different directions by changing the lighting and moving the, the four chairs around. That would give me enough to give us the different directions. And then upstage, we had a translucent drop um, that we could project on and change color on. Um, but as the show went, and on, on either side, there were um, four areas where people could be interviewed because part of the conceit of this play is that there had been a documentary in this quartet. And so we would see pieces of the documentary. So we came up with a blue background with music on the background, as if you saw talking heads on the screen. Um, but then the backdrop being translucent was back painted. And as the show went on, and as the passion for playing this one piece of music grew and grew, you saw the sheet music in the original handwriting um, appear. Um, and it got brighter and brighter as the passion and the power of you know, when the this piece came. Um, and then we discovered the lighting designer that since we had this, at the end of the play when they were getting their applause and they just performed it, if they went behind the set, you would see their shadows through it as if they were on the other side of the curtain taking their bows and then they would come backstage to finish off the play. So it's another way where the collaboration grows because each person has their talent. So um, this is a play called Doubt, um, and this play was done on Broadway and many different scenes. Um, Ray and I decided that what we would want to look at was the world. This takes place in a Catholic in a Catholic parish where there's the church, the school, the garden, 
And so um, the decision that we made was that we would show all of these things and not shift the uh, not not shift the area where they're going. To. In fact, the actors would walk through it. But the biggest thing that um, we talked about was this idea of how the stained glass windows give the sense of the church that hangs over or the face that hangs over these people. So, so stage left. You'll see on the bottom photo we have a pulpit because one of the characters is a priest and he actually gives two sermons during the show. And by backlighting the stained glass windows, you get to feel you're inside the church. And then on the middle here, there was a garden in the cloister area outside the church. So by front lighting it, we are now in the garden and we're looking at the windows flickering in the background with candles, etc. inside the church. And then adjacent to the garden, the top photo shows the principal's office with a window overlooking the garden. And I think the final set we got here, this is a, a play that we did most recently. This is called Sylvia. It's, a, it's, a, it's an odd kind of comedy where it's about a man who falls in love with a dog. Couldn't his kids have left and he and his wife are a little um, you know, coming apart. But the dog is played by a person. But this is another one that takes place in many, many sets. And, uh, in many places, and so we had to capture both the 